Hey, what's up? What's up, everybody? You tuned in to another episode of Strategic Moves. I'm your host, Ken Dow. This is a place where we bring art, culture, politics, and business all together, and we do it every Sunday right here on this channel. When I'm not shooting this podcast, I am the owner of Strategic Resources, where we specialize in political campaigns, government, and public relations. I've been doing it around this state for over 25 years. Met some interesting people along the way, and I want to make your next move a strategic move. And this program gives me an opportunity to bring some of our people in. We get a chance to sit down and talk about some of our experiences, and hopefully there's something you can get out of that that'll help you in your personal life and maybe even help you in your business. Oh, if it sounds like something you like to tune in to or get more information about, then all I need you to do is hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell as well so that you will know the next time this program will be coming on. So today, we're going to get back and sit back with a gentleman who stopped in on our podcast to talk to us about some interesting things he got going on in the community and some things he's doing around our city here. We're going to get right to him in a minute, but before I bring him on, I got to do a shout out to the best podcasting producer in Cleveland. That's DJ True. How you doing in there, Latif? I am doing well. I'm well. It's so, Thanksgiving which, weekend, What are we brother? doing for Thanksgiving? Where, where the spots at? Where the plates at? Oh, I guess we're going to be coming to your house, right? <laughs> Y'all going to be coming up. And I, listen, Jeff just said he's a Presbyterian, so we know we're not going over there to get no chitlins or nothing. Ooh, you know what? I don't even eat those things. So I don't even know what that even came out my mouth. So even if I wanted some, <laughs> I wouldn't go in there. About <laughs> <That's> <laughs> everybody chitlins, so no, let's put no. it. We ain't going over his house uh-uh. to get no meat. Let's put it that way, okay? <laughs> and we'll pause <laughs> on that statement too. <laughs> a meatless yeah. Thanksgiving. I mean, I'm yeah, just tearing yeah. this whole thing yeah, all up. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> meat, it's meatless. It's we don't even want to say that, man. <laughs> really I'm just a pescatarian now, man. I'm a pescatarian. I'm pescatarian. I'm pescatarian, man. I'm pescatarian, oh, man. These pesky pescatarians. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to get started, man. We got this gentleman in. He's been in our community. He's an entrepreneur. He's a speaker. He has a podcast. He puts on events around town and does a whole lot more of um, helping kids. He does a coat drive and a few other things he does around here. And we're going to just sit back and talk a little bit just about what's going on in Cleveland and what he got going on in his life. So without further ado, everybody, let's introduce. Introduce Jeff Brown to our program. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Hey, thank you for the opportunity. And, uh, and not a problem, not a problem. As we always do in our program, because we like to get in everybody's business. Man. That's all right. You need to give us a little bit of background. I did do some research on you. I knew you grew up in East Cleveland. I did. So just tell us about where you grew up, your family a little bit, and then we're going to get on to the other stuff. Yeah, so I grew up in East Cleveland. Grew up right there on Lakefront Avenue. Okay. Uh, did a lot of my playing on Northfield Avenue. Mm-hmm. But vacant lots. Yeah, now, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I actually, funny, I, a friendly reminder of myself, I always mm-hmm. drive down my, my the street, the yes. front of, you yes. know, where I grew up mm-hmm. at. Mm-hmm. The house that I grew up in, my mm-hmm. childhood home mm-hmm. is still, it's still there. Okay. Which is a blessing, always reminds me of mm-hmm. where I grew up at and what, I, what I've been through and just the journey itself. Mm-hmm. Went to East Cleveland Public Schools, went okay. to Roselle, Focus School, oh, yeah. Kirk. Okay. Okay. Graduated from Shaw, just mm-hmm. celebrated my 25 year reunion. Big okay. shout out to my class, the class mm-hmm. of 98. We just celebrated 25 years. And in the same token, we just buried one of our loved ones, one of our classmates, Sam Deuce Wilson. And I'm that's down. the homie, that's the yeah, homie. Yeah, so, so I dedicate this interview to him and my class. And uh, as we enter into the holiday season, so but uh, hey man just like anybody struggle when come up in a two-parent home okay. my mom was really the inspiration for me my entrepreneurial background comes from my dad what your dad do my dad was a general contractor a lot of people don't know i actually do real estate uh, okay. i buy homes renovate them resell mm-hmm. them and mm-hmm. also i do a little bit of what we call wholesaling okay. where, you're uh, an agent no no sell? agent just wholesale mm-hmm. where you have clients mm-hmm. that are looking to sell their property right. and uh, for low because they don't want to deal with it no more sometimes the property might be distressed but mm-hmm. you have investors that are looking for those opportunities and they buy that mm-hmm. property and re- renovate it and make their money or start cash flowing on those properties so i'm pretty much what you call a connect of people but so outside did, of, go ahead did, did your what your mom do oh my mom just worked mm-hmm. she a blue collar mm-hmm. worker but was consistent okay and, and what she did and always elevated 
in in whatever field she was in. And mm-hmm. but more so than anything, my mom is a faith based woman. Sure. She's a woman of God, mm-hmm. and it is her prayers and mm-hmm. the praise that she gave to God that has really kept me alive. Mm-hmm. And nice. I've been through a lot, mm-hmm. and I always share my my testimony. I'm one that have a prison record. I'm mm-hmm. an ex felon, but it was the prayers of her. That okay. they kept me alive. I almost died mm-hmm. in um, October 18th of 2008. My, my life weighed in the balance where the mm-hmm. doctor told my mom, we did all we can do. But really? it was her prayers that kept me alive. When I think about my mom, she's just more than a blue collar worker. Mm-hmm. She is the woman that's praying for me. That's and correct. she's the woman that's cheering for me. She's mm-hmm. the woman that corrects me. She's the mm-hmm. woman mm-hmm. that she just genuinely love who I am. And mm-hmm. she's a phenomenal woman. So you got um, brothers and sisters? I do. I'm the oldest of three. Oh. I'm 43. My mm-hmm. sister is uh, 40. And uh, mm-hmm. my brother, he is 30. Yeah, he's 31. He's 31. They so, all still live here? Yeah. Everybody's still in Cleveland. Mm-hmm. And everybody's very successful in their own right, in their own field. And we're just blessed. We got a blessed family and, and rich with both challenges and victories. Mm-hmm. So when you look at it, mm-hmm. life hasn't been that bad. So let's go back then. You said that you got a history and you had got in a little bit of some circumstances that caused you to catch a felony. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so during the height of the, the mortgage crisis, doing mm-hmm. how the mortgage crisis, a lot of uh, blacks mm-hmm. were, in my opinion, were targeted mm-hmm. as down, as people to take downfall mm-hmm. in a system for real that was, that had nothing to do with us. We were just a part of it. Mm-hmm. But because of mortgage fraud, I, I caught a, a state and federal case. Yeah. And through that experience, being on the other side of it now in the awareness, when you are a black man in a system mm-hmm. that's designed for you not to win or fail, Mm-hmm. You have to be careful what works for those that are in charge of the system or have influence in the system and don't necessarily work for you. Mm-hmm. And so one of the things that I've learned was that you can't be quick to just jump in, make fast decisions because it's available. You got to look at everything in its whole totality. And so from that, I learned that, hey, I'm not always quick to make quick decisions mm-hmm. in this stage of my life because I understood the effect that it really had on my mom, mm-hmm. my family, my friends. Um, did you get time? I did. I did three years in the state. I did really? a year in the feds. I did. Really? Uh-huh. I came home in 2013, April Fools of 2013. I came <laughs> home, right? And, and it's interesting uh, that I would be released on that day. Mm. Came to the halfway house right here on 55th mm. at Oriana House. And, and then from there, I went on house arrest and I ultimately went on house arrest, ultimately finished my time. Mm-hmm. And then from there, re- worked on how to rebuild my life. And So far, so good? So far, so good. Yeah. God has been good. Even when it seems dark, there's light. Mm-hmm. And, and that's my testimony. And, mm-hmm. and I appreciate the people who have that have been influential um, in where I am today. Because exactly. those connections, I tell people, our connections affect mm-hmm. our direction in life. And I appreciate the relationships and the connections that I made that has mm-hmm. helped me mm-hmm. uh, grow to where I am today. And I'm still growing. I'm still expanding. Mm-hmm. And I'm doing some amazing things. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Yeah, I understand because that mortgage thing was a, a trip in itself, man. Mm-hmm. I My first business I had growing up was in the mortgage business. We were mortgage brokers, man. Right for um, man, and so I could date myself. I'm much older than you, but mm-hmm. right before you needed a broker's license to do sell mortgages in Ohio, I think we were one of the first black mortgage companies to get that license from the state of Ohio. Yeah. I, I, I could say it was a guy named by the name of Peter Warigi. He mm. was the first. Peter Warigi. Yeah. Peter. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, Peter. Peter's still around. Hell no, Peter in Africa, yeah, man. Africa, he, I'm hey, saying he's hey, African, hey, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Peter in Nigeria. Peter got out of here. Yeah, 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 he took all the money <laughs> and, and, and went on that boat and oh, flew yeah. over there to... Uh, so, so you know I know what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, no, listen. Know, Were right? you a challenge mortgage? Were you in challenge? You, I, I had my own mortgage company, okay. and me and Peter were mortgage... Bro, I used to take loans to Peter and vice versa. Oh, man, Peter, but let me tell you something. Peter was smart. Peter was a really good dude. Man, he was a good dude. He was very smart. Yeah. And he, from what I understand, he died 
some bullets himself. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Telling you. I, I'm trying to tell you. I know the game. So when you said that, I'm like, yeah. oh, I know a lot more yeah. about that than you yeah. think I yeah. did. So oh, no, listen. Yeah. Hey, if you yeah. know anything about that time, yeah. you was, know it what it mean. is. And, and I'm talking about the time before your time when it got crazy. The time when Peter and I first got going, it was just getting going. Peter had a business. I think his office was out there off of Richmond Road or somewhere. He was yeah. Out. He was in the. He had bought the. I think it used to be a a, a, a bank. It was a bank uh, building. Yes. It was the. It was a bank building. He bought and they mm -hmm. had a medical building. Yes. There was a lot of stuff going yeah. on in that he, building. He, he yeah, was, he was doing it big out there, and he was doing absolutely. Mortgages. So he had to get a mortgage license. We got one. He was the first African American person in the state of Ohio to get his mortgage license. We were second right behind him. Yeah. And um, I remember that. And then we got out of the business for a lot of different reasons as well. But yeah, there that I do know, and it's easy to get caught up in that if you don't watch yeah. it. Yeah. And I'm going to say this, we're, we're learning now 20 mm -hmm. years later, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not going to, you know, stay on it too long, but mm -hmm. we're learning now 20 years later that the folks that went to prison should not have went to prison. There mm -hmm. was a lot of, we're hearing this from judges mm -hmm. that uh, actually presided over those cases that mm -hmm. a lot of those cases should not have been prosecuted mm -hmm. because the, the the cases were based on deception Correct. and there was not no deception because those lenders during that time mm -hmm. they uh, actually knew that's what correct. they were doing. What they were doing. They actually sold the mortgages before mm -hmm. the buyers even correct. signed the final correct. docs correct. to correct. clear the clothes. You correct. know what I'm talking about. They wrote a whole so, movie about yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> so when you look at that, right. again, the system looked to, to blame somebody. Yes. And then they came for us, mm -hmm. majority blacks. They yeah. came for us. Right. And uh, unfortunately, that, that was the cause and effect mm -hmm. of that thing. But again, I tell people all the time, I'm just glad that you know, that part of the experience is over. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad to see where, where we at right now. So let's talk about, you said you got sick. Now, what, what was that all about? During that time, uh, around 2006 to 2008, I... You done got out. Huh? You done got out, right? No, no, I, got, I came home and... So I went in 2009, I came home in 2013. So this happened before? You this went. happened before. Okay. Yeah, around 2006, 2008, I mm -hmm. was really, I took ill. And I didn't know what was going on with my body. What were your symptoms like? Man, I couldn't eat. Mm -hmm. I couldn't. I was losing weight, mm. always throwing up. I just thought maybe because it was the weight of, of what I was dealing with, the cases and everything mm -hmm. like that, that maybe it was wearing on, was me. Wearing on me. Mm -hmm. you know, my skin. I'm a dark-skinned brother, but my skin now is, as you can tell, is really evenly toned. Mm -hmm. But imagine this skin tone like dark okay mm -hmm. not health like a, mm -hmm. a unhealthy dark right. dope so right. i didn't know what was going on mm -hmm. i had lost so much weight like i had became 135 pounds wow and wow. so it was but it was a sickly type weight mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so in 2007 in november 2007 i was in so much pain i was over my mom's house and she rushed me to the hospital my appendix ruptured in mm. me Mm. And so the doctors at that time that were treating me at St. Vincent, because I had had a, a trail of going to them for my for my checkups, my normal checkups, they they did a immediate surgery on me. Mm -hmm. And uh, come to find out all the poison from the yeah, appendix yeah, got to yeah, my body. Yeah, they didn't yeah. think I was going to make it dead. Yeah. But glory be to God, I'm here. Yeah. And then we maybe thought I would have recovered from that. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen. So I still began, my, my health still mm -hmm. took this turn. And so in in 2008, around October 2008, actually October 18th of 2008, mm -hmm. I went in for a normal checkup. And on this particular day, it was interesting, uh, the doctor, Dr. Boyles, I'll never forget him, mm -hmm. he gave me his phone number, he gave me his cell phone number. Mm -hmm. Now, most doctors don't do that right. with the patients. Right. He gave me a cell phone number, he says, Jeff, if you need me, you call me. Don't hesitate. I'm mm. going to take care of you. I didn't. Mm. I'm like, man, okay, whatever. Right. So I'm leaving out the hospital. I can barely walk. I can barely move. And I'm just struggling, man. I'm hurting. Like, I'm in pain. Mm. And so wind up getting to the car, and I can't even start the car. Wow. And you trying I, to drive yourself. I'm trying to drive myself, man. Wow. And so what wound up happening, I, I called the doctor. Someone just told me to call the doctor. He said, Jeff, you got enough strength to get to the front door. If you mm. get to the front door, I'll take care of the rest. So I just prayed. I said, Lord, help me get to the front door. Mm. Let me get to the front door. And I got enough strength to get to the front door. God helped me. And the nurses were there to get me together. And they wind up saying, they, they said they, that I had to have surgery. 
because they saw in the x-ray that two feet of my small intestines had closed mm. up. Mm. It closed. So there was nothing coming out and nothing could really go in because there was a major blockage. blockage. So I wound up going to surgery, but in that surgery they found out that portions of my small intestines not only had blocked, was blocked, two feet of it had, was blocked, but they found out that portions of my small intestine had perforated, it mm. exploded. So they had to put it, they had to orchestrate it wow. and put it back together. Then they had to remove a foot of my large intestines. Mm. And so they were like, man, we don't know what the hell, the fact that he's still alive. Mm. And so it was during that time, I had been in surgery seven hours. Mm. And the doctor told my mom that, hey, we done did all we can do. We don't know, we don't see, we don't know what's gonna happen. At this point, we don't even know he gonna make it. Mm. And it was at that moment, my mother shares the testimony. If she was here, she'll tell you. She said, you've done all you can do, but I'm going to go talk to the real doctor. I'm mm -hmm. going to go talk to God. I'm going to talk to the one who made him. Mm -hmm. and, and it was from those prayers, her prayers and my grandmother's prayers, that I'm here today. How long was you down? Oof. That sounded like you were. Yeah, I was down you, for a while. You was down, down for a while. Yeah, man. I was down for, for a while, man. I didn't really find strength until it was time for me to be sentenced to prison. So it took really? me about a year to really recover from that because it was so much. So from that, then I'm going to prison. Yeah. Oh, one prison to the next. Yeah. So basically. this, yeah. So no, listen, this thing was. <laughs> you can say a physical prison yeah, to I now was, a mental I was, prison. I was, man, listen, it was yeah. crazy, man. Yeah. It's mad. Yeah. I'm dealing with this mentally, emotionally. I'm in a bad space mm -hmm. spiritually, mm -hmm. even though I'm, I'm looking at God in my life. But I'm still ain't depressed. I'm just not understanding because right. I, I ain't did wrong to nobody. Right. Um, I'm not a criminal. Right. But yet, I did. I do understand that you know the lifestyle that mm -hmm. I was able to obtain. Mm -hmm. uh, I was moving fast. Right. And so sometimes God allows us to crash, mm -hmm. but He allows us to crash so He can save us. Mm -hmm. And I think through that, through the through that experience, understanding it on this side of it. God was able to use me. He was. He allowed me to speak into the lives of men that were in the prison that mm -hmm. were not being reached. You're talking about brothers that were in prison because, and good brothers, because they lost their job and they couldn't support their child. They're in prison because they got a petty theft. Mm -hmm. And really, a lot of this stuff, when you look at the prison system, they're not treating the problem. It's mental, right? right? right. It's, you got a lot of brothers that's mental have mental illness. You got mm -hmm. a lot of this stuff is spiritual. Mm -hmm. A lot of it's spiritual. It's generational curses. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That that can that that are where brothers are struggling to to break to, because yeah. it's mm -hmm. a curse. It's mm -hmm. being passed down from one mm -hmm. generation to another generation. Correct. So you're seeing all of this, but yet I'm relying on what I know. Mm -hmm. Before I could even get to that. I had to deal with my own demons. Mm -hmm. I had to deal with my struggle. Mm -hmm. I wanted to give up. I was, man, listen, I'm one of the most strong, headstrong people I know. Mm -hmm. But even in this, I'm like, I done lost everything, all the money I done made, houses, I done lost everything. Everything. And, I, and I, so what do I have? And so God began to deal with me on forgiveness because there were some mm -hmm. people I had to deal with that did some things to me. Mm. But then as God dealt with me on forgiveness, he like, what about the people you hurt? What right. about the what, right. what about you? Right. So it was through all of that where I had to find forgiveness and deliverance for myself in order for me to be effective in the season that I was in. And and I used that as a platform to really catapult me to where I am today. So I hear that was part of your makeup to help you bring it all back together and get you back to where what else was some of the things you when you got out you figured you know what this is what i'm going to need to do to become this jeff brown you are today you say i got to reinvent myself right yeah so i'm gonna tell you what happened i was praying in prison one day mm -hmm. I, I was on my way home i knew i was actually no i was getting closer to home let me mm -hmm. say that so mm -hmm. it was like i had maybe it was like maybe two or three weeks before i was leaving the state to mm -hmm. transfer to the federal penitentiary okay and I prayed. I was watching at that time. Facebook had went public. Okay. And and I was watching my TV and I was watching Fox Eight as news. Mm -hmm. And I began to pray. I said, Lord, you've created me. I'm an entrepreneur. You allow me to make money. You allow me to do this. You allow me to do that. I want to go back and continue what you've given me, but I want to do it in a different light. Allow my voice to be heard. Allow me to regain 
my place back in my community. This mm-hmm. is what my prayer was as an entrepreneur, as using my voice. And don't allow this to be a stain on me because mm-hmm. I believe in my heart because I am saved, because I, because Christ is my Savior, that is his blood that has washed away my sins. It is his blood that my mistakes have been covered, and it, it, it is no more. Mm-hmm. So for me, I, I believe that. Mm-hmm. I believe that the God that I love and serve is a God that specializes in second chance and third mm-hmm. and fourth and fifth chance. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, he says in the scripture, he says, the, the disciple said, how many times should I forgive my brother? He says 70 times seven, which means as much as you can mm-hmm. as hey, if I can forgive you, mm-hmm. then guess what? Then you got to forgive your brother. So these are the things that I was dealing with. And this was in my mind. So when I came home from prison, I wanted to go to school. I, before I actually went in prison, I enrolled into broadcasting school Okay. and I enrolled into o- OCB, mm-hmm. but I never went because I went to prison. So I came back home when I was released from prison and I started I went to broadcasting school okay. and 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 from that I was able to really find the raw talent I was able to start really mm-hmm. figuring it out mm-hmm. I got my first internship on the Ronnie Knight show okay which was a gospel radio yeah. show my friend Darvio Morrow mm-hmm. who's the owner of FCB radio network mm-hmm. where the Jeff Brown show mm-hmm. is currently in partnership with he helped me get that um, and it was from there I was able to get my feet wet okay. into broadcasting. So I'm like, man, this is, I feel it. This is where I need to be. Mm-hmm. It was from there. So then Ronnie Knight produced a show for me called OMG Sports. Okay. We were all on 1220 AM at that time. Okay. And that was in 20, the show got canceled because my co-host <laughs> said some things <laughs> on a Republican station. You can't go crazy on a Republican <laughs> station because they're listening, right? right. <laughs> you got to still play your role. You, right. can, you can be somewhat opinionated, right. but you got to be careful, right? right? But it was the experience for me. Mm-hmm. So at that time, I was I was a free agent. Mm-hmm. So I began to use Facebook as my platform for my show mm-hmm. to, to g- garner strength and confidence mm-hmm. to get out here. And, and and I'm gonna tell you what happened. So my good friend, my brother Kyle Early, okay. Pastor Kyle Early, mm-hmm. he and Bashir at the time were protesting Tim McGinty. Okay. Okay, as the county prosecutor, the prosecutor right? at that mm-hmm. time, right? Mm-hmm. And so Kyle was like, Man, I want you to come at that time. Judge now Judge Mike Nelson was the president Correct. of the NAACP. N- NAACP. Right. So Kyle called me like Jeff, man, I want you to come, man, put on your best suit. Now at that time I was rebuilding my life. I ain't, <laughs> so they, hey, listen, that suit. the only suit that I, <laughs> hey, listen, I had a four button suit from 2002, you know what I'm saying? And with the little wide leg at the bottom, you know, I'm like, man, I ain't right. really got no suit, man. Like, man, just put on your best. Put on your best. So I went to the press conference. Okay. Okay. I've never been to a press mm-hmm. conference ever. So I go to the press conference and at the press conference, Bashir's talking, he like, he's with the man this, <laughs> with the man that. Here come Kyle early. We demand this, mm-hmm. we demand that. And I'm just standing there with my with this suit on, this brown suit on that I got with the brown, light brown pinstripes. <laughs> and I'm just standing there smiling. But I'm smiling like, man, I can't believe I'm really a part of this. I'm thinking in my mind, I'm like, damn, I hope my uh, probation officer <laughs> don't see me. Because I'm, I'm on federal right. probation at the time. Right. Too, right? <laughs> so, so I'm like, damn, I hope they don't see me. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to mess up. I ain't trying to go back. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, we talking about I'm being in, in the yeah, federal prosecutor. I'm prosecutor. But I'm like, damn, I'm like, shoot. Is they about to, huh? So I'm already in it now, you know? You know what I'm right. The beautiful part about that was, and then you hear come President Mike at the time, mm-hmm. Judge Mike Nelson, mm-hmm. President Mike Nelson was, he said his piece. And then we had another meeting in the back with media. And then we had another meeting once the media left. And in that meeting, it was an intense meeting because wow. they were talking about, hey, we getting ready to do this. We getting ready to do that. You got your bail money because some of us, we going to jail. We getting ready to do this. We doing that. So I'm like, hell no. I say so. I call Kyle. I'm like, hey, man, we talk to you outside, bro. I say, man, listen, I'm down for the cause, but I'm not, not going, going back, back to jail. To jail. I I said, right. He said, no, man. He, said, he started laughing, right? But I, I tell that story because he was one of the brothers that was really instrumental right. in me coming back That's and helping me reestablish my voice in this community, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. not under not knowing that 
because of even that way he sold into me and mm -hmm. just various my pastor my my pastor my late pastor bishop j delano ellis the second now let's my, stop there my, yeah now, now we got something common there yeah he married me and my wife oh did he yeah yeah he, he married me and my wife 26 years ago wow yeah. okay I, I went like i said i was going there 26 okay. years ago guess what he came and saw me while I was in prison. He talked really? to the he talked to the judge. Hey, listen, the man told me he said, Jeff, let me tell you something, son, because he became a father that I needed in that moment. That's correct. He He's became, a very good man. He became the dad that I needed. Yes, yes. And even now, I think about it, man. It brings tears to my eyes because mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm trying not to get emotional because mm -hmm. he was everything that I needed mm -hmm. as a father. Mm -hmm. He became the father that I needed mm -hmm. because my world it crashed on me. Right. And he was able to speak into me, mm -hmm. but even him helping me regain my confidence, he and his wife, who is mm -hmm. still my pastor mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. she's retired from mm -hmm. BCC, mm -hmm. but now she's in Dallas, but mm -hmm. she still covers me. She's still my pastor. Yeah, man, so that love and support, my family, my mom and my grandma. So people begin to, 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 to stand around me and mm -hmm. support me. So what, and I begin to get that confidence. So mm -hmm. now, as I'm moving forward and I'm really pursuing this broadcasting career, I get a phone call from one of my buddies. Mm -hmm. And he says, Jeff, I want to, he was working for a local pod, internet radio station, podcasting station. And mm -hmm. he said, man, I envision you being a podcaster, man. You can do this, man. You can do radio. Mm -hmm. I said, well, what would my show be? The Jeff Brown Show. I said, oh, no, I don't like that, man. I don't right. like that name, man. Mm -hmm. Because I was still insecure about the name because mm -hmm. of what was the past. My, the past. Right. And he like, no, nah, man, it's, it's right. It's you. Mm -hmm. It's Your name fits you because anybody that know Jeff Brown, they know who you are. Mm -hmm. And I talked to him. His name is Justin, Justin Rum. And I told Justin, I said, man, I know. And he said, no. Nah. He said, Negro, that's going to be your, that's going to be your name. Mm -hmm. He said, even if you don't come here and do it, take that name with you mm -hmm. he said because that's you and so uh, a couple other people reached out to me and um i was led to connect with darvio morrow mm -hmm. at fcb because again he was instrumental in me getting into broadcasting okay. when i did mm -hmm. by helping me get the internship with dj ronnie knight mm -hmm. and and we've been doing phenomenal ever since so no you got a good show i i follow you guys on yeah. your show and yeah. been listening to you guys how long you been doing the show now so we just celebrated five years this year in February, mm -hmm. and uh, we actually crossed over the 200th episode threshold okay. this year as well. And I think one of the greatest assets of the show is Coco Brown, actress and comedian Coco yeah. Brown. Yeah. And not knowing that she would be my co-host, she mm -hmm. came on as a guest for the show. Okay. And I met her through Sam Silk, mm -hmm. hanging out with him. He's my friend and mm -hmm. brother and mentor. Mm -hmm. But she's a phenomenal asset to the show and and what she brings a balance to me. Why don't you tell you the people get, what the show is all about? Yeah, so the show is, anybody that knows the show, is called The Jeff Brown Show with Coco Brown. Mm -hmm. and, and I think my mantra, we and I think it sums up the show, is called The Show That Makes You Laugh and Think. Mm -hmm. One of the things I envision about the show is empowerment and entertainment. Mm -hmm. We want to entertain, but we want to empower people, right? Mm -hmm. So we have all of that. We cover hot topics, trending topics. We cover, we have celebrity in-depth interviews. Mm -hmm. um, we've been blessed to um, host on the show uh, actress Lisa Ray, um, Judge Lynn Toler. Mm -hmm. I've had interviews with Reverend Jesse Jackson, civil rights icon. Mm -hmm. uh, Roland Martin has been on the show. Farrah Gray, Vernae mm -hmm. Watson. You, a lot mm -hmm. of people know her from... Mm -hmm. Fresh Prince of Bel Air. That was his mom. Will okay. Smith. She played Will right. Smith's mom, okay. right? She's on that. The first show. one or the second one? The first one. Okay. She's on the show called Bob's Heart Abishola. Okay. So she, she she's major. We've had who else? We've had DC Young Fly, J. Anthony Brown. Okay. We've had man, just a plethora. Yeah, of, J. Anthony. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. Okay. So we've had a plethora of folks that mm -hmm. comes that came through the show, and man, just great conversation. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, Coco Brown was one of our guests, but now she's a part of the show, mm -hmm. and um, she helps keep the show where you know with the intensity that we, that we have the integrity of the show mm -hmm. and it's just a good look man the show is phenomenal we also i also use the show as a platform for community empowerment you talked about coach for kids that's something that we started over eight years ago and because of the platform we were able to mm -hmm. bring the community together it's not about jeff brown but it's about the community coming together to do the show uh to do this this event every year because mm -hmm. people do need help people do need have you're needs. you're doing it this year 
Absolutely. Okay. December 8th is mm-hmm. actually 100 Coats for 100 Kids, the Jeff Brown oh. Show. Okay. We're doing that at the Four Bistro. That's a, one of the spots that I normally do a lot of my mm-hmm. events at. Big shout out to uh, my girl Rhonda, the mm-hmm. Four Bistro staff there. Mm-hmm. Um, Let's give a shout out to where they can reach you for if they want to. Oh, for you sure. You could go to my Instagram page, mm-hmm. Jeff underscore Brown underscore official page. Mm-hmm. You can do that. And uh, or just hit me up on Facebook at mm-hmm. Jeff Brown Jr., my personal page, and just reach out to me or go to my website at jeffbrownofficial.com. Yeah, so I want to make sure you guys help him out with those coats. That's important. Oh, yeah, it's definitely important. And we're getting calls. I've been getting calls already yeah. about oh, cause, coats. Because if you ever notice it, man, the homelessness in the community has done got much worse. People who are not from here would know that in certain portions of our city, homelessness, the homeless people were near the shelters, which was yeah, over there yeah, off of Lakeside. Yeah, side. yeah, all of, yeah man, now, it's crazy. when you ride down so, as far as Superior, man, mm-hmm. you go down like 30th and Superior, people like laying on the side. Oh, man, it's man, bad. And tents and stuff it's everywhere. It's really bad. So yeah. it's really important that we do stuff to help out as much as we can. Yeah, and yeah, and so that has been one of my passions during the mm-hmm. uh, pandemic. I know you're familiar with Dr. Yvonne Pointer. That's correct. Okay, Hope Haven, Auntie. Mm-hmm. During the pandemic, during the height of the pandemic, um, it was it was pressed upon me to mm-hmm. start a campaign and in partnership with her and the Urban League, Billy Sharp, okay. and the City of Cleveland as well. Oh, Billy, I forgot about Billy. I might yeah. bring Billy on my show. Here. Yeah, you need to get him on. <laughs> Billy. Man, he's doing some phenomenal things yeah, too. Big right. shout out to him. We fed frontline workers. We had partnerships with Chick Fil A, mm. McDonald's, Sam Silk's Chicken and Fish, okay. the Fairmount, the Four Bistro. Mm-hmm. Angie's Soul mm-hmm. Food, mm-hmm. where we all, where they were all putting up food to feed frontline workers. Wow. And that was inspired by a young lady who reached out to me mm-hmm. through Facebook and asked me, could I use my platform mm-hmm. f- to bring about awareness through prayer? Because mm-hmm. the nurses were fighting a, a virus that had no vaccination. They were they were not protected. This was recently. This was during the pandemic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we were able to feed not just nurses. We fed all five police districts Wow. Okay, six, I believe, mm-hmm. all six districts. We fed over 3,000 folks, mm-hmm. VA hospital, Metro. Like I said, we tried to do something with Cleveland Clinic, but they never responded back to us, which is okay. But we did what we did. Mm-hmm. We also were able to send resources and food over to Africa mm-hmm. uh, for some of the children that are a part of the uh, safe haven that Dr. Yvonne has. So we've been able to do a lot of great stuff with this platform to help people. And uh, and that's just my heart. That's my goal, man. I love people. I love my city. And So we tell us something else you got going. You got a new program that's coming up. You're doing something. Oh, you're, you're uh, talking about your confessions. Se- your confessions, Ooh. your secrets. And we yes. were just talking about the yeah. I said we're going to stop so we can get in this <laughs> podcast about it. So you got a big event coming up. It's called I Confessions. Do. That's so. the day after the coat drive, December so 9th. Oh, so you're rolling in December. Yeah, so yeah, man. Normally I don't do any events in December mm-hmm. other than the coat drive, mm-hmm. but I felt it was necessary to do this because I wanted to do something different. Mm-hmm. No no slight to anyone that's doing something, but I wanted to do something different and mm-hmm. I wanted to share with the community, my family, my friends, what I've been up to. Mm-hmm. And so we shot a pilot last year mm-hmm. in December for t- TV talk show called mm-hmm. Confessions mm-hmm. with Jeff Brown. Okay. And that, that idea was created out of a conversation I had with a friend that had a secret that was actually causing her or them, I should say, a lot of stress. And with that said, I looked up secrets. I began to research secrets. Mm -hmm. And you learn that there's 38 different categories of secrets. There is several different categories of secrets. One of the categories or characteristics, I should say, of secrets is natural. There's a natural secret. There's a promise secret. There's an entrusted mm. secret. Then mm. there's what they call personal secret. That personal secret is something because that secret is the secret that you have within yourself mm. that you don't even share with your spouse. The right. person that you land in the bed with every night, they don't. This, this, it's those secrets that you won't even share with them. But yet, you're supposed to be transparent, right? Mm-hmm. But you don't share it. You keep it to yourself. You don't tell your kids. You don't tell your, your loved ones and your friends. You actually take that secret to the grave. Mm-hmm. So I began to research this thing and even the negative effect on your health when you carry a secret. But is that a fact? Is that a you taking on or get, taking on too much of yeah, somebody else's? Yeah, yeah, you're taking on, yeah, you're taking on other people 
mm-hmm. secret because you're trying to hold on mm-hmm. by keeping your word and keeping that pack because mm-hmm. you don't want to let it go. you like, mm-hmm. that I gave my word. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, if you continue to do that, sometimes in some cases it can be detrimental to your health. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, you probably don't know this. In my research, I learned that at any given moment, moment any individual can can hold up to 13 secrets at one time. A minimum, though. A minimum. Of one person. One, Just one, you, as an individual. Mm-hmm. Now, think about your lifespan at this point. Mm-hmm. Think about a person that's lived for 60 years, 70 years, 80 years, 50 years, 90 years. Mm-hmm. Think about all the secrets that they've been able to obtain in their mind. Mm-hmm. One conversation can trigger and unlock. But what's a secret? What's... What, experiences that I have in life that I don't share with you don't make it a secret, does it? It's just that I just didn't tell you yet. Secrets are the things that you choose not to tell people, but you know that it could be detrimental to you or it may be detrimental to the person that's around you. No, well, secret could be something good that I just ain't told you neither. I know something very good about Jeff that I'm just not going to say. Hey, that could be. Right? But in this case, in mm-hmm. from the research, mm-hmm. majority of the research says that secrets... Mm-hmm. Are they have a negative effect? Now, how that person deals with it as mm-hmm. well, that's an, that's another aspect of it. Okay. How do you weigh on it? Do you allow it to weigh on you? Do you but Go most people confess. Most people that yeah, <laughs> most people but listen, but when you think about the research, I'm talking about psychology mm-hmm. today, the Pew Research, mm-hmm. when you go big think, mm-hmm. when you go look at all these different places that have mm-hmm. you, even encyclopedias, think about when, when those that are Catholic, they go to confession. Correct. That's and what they, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, to get it yeah, off their chest. To get it off their chest. But guess what? Think about the priest that's in the uh, <laughs> confession chamber that got his own stuff. You know what I'm saying? Right. So <laughs> carrying, he probably he, got he's carrying it. Yeah, he, he, he probably got all that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? But you share your confession with it. So, so out of that, man, I was uh-huh. able to create this show uh-huh. and, and the pilot for the show. And, and, uh, so what you going to do on the show? Y'all huh? gonna, you going to sit up and confess? Or anybody so can no, come what up this, and confess? What the show does allows for people, mm-hmm. individuals, to come on and share whatever confession they is and face the individuals that the confession Whoa, you're uh, doing some real stuff here. yeah that who the confession is about or will be affected by the confession but let Ooh. me say this we don't just focus on the drama of it and the trauma of mm-hmm. the confession but we also provide a space for healing because now we're giving space to urban psychiatrists and mental health therapists, relationship therapists, sex therapists, Mm. family therapists, you know what I'm saying, to come in and help bridge the gap between these individuals. Because you got to think about it, for a person to say, I got to say this, and the weight of it. What's that? So so you facilitating this. Yeah, this was this is this was something I created, man. And No, I said you gonna actually sit there and facilitate the Interaction between the person and the secrets and all of that. Oh yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, man. Listen, oh, okay, Jim. yeah, no, listen, man. <laughs> hey, okay. when I listen, when I when this <laughs> when I created this thing, I'm telling you, man. When God gave me the idea for it, it only come from God. Mm-hmm. But give us the brain and the thoughts. Yeah, man. When I created this thing, it the people who's gonna be on the show, huh? How did you pick the people to come on the show? So this pilot, we have real scenarios, mm-hmm. but That's those amazing. folks mm-hmm. were didn't want to do it. So what we were able to do, we had actors and actresses reenact. Situations. The situations. That's probably even better. Yeah, uh, for the pilot. For the pilot. Just for the pilot. Okay. But you won't be, but you would be surprised, man. I've had people that's learned about this and they're like, hey, I want to come on the show. So, and we ain't even, we ain't even signed the, the, the deal with the networks yet. On the 5th. On the 9th. On the 9th. That's a real show or that's the pilot? That's the pilot. All right, okay. I just want to be clear. When I walk in there, I'm like, all right, so these are going to be actors reinventing, going through scenarios of stuff that... Okay, that's going to be that's going to be interesting. Yeah, it's okay. going to be... So what we did was we were able to really capture this mm-hmm. situation, mm-hmm. and I'm excited. Oh, no, that's cool. I'm going to be there, man. That's That sounds very interesting. Oh, yeah, man. man. And, and the tickets are, like I say, they're $40. There's opportunity for people to market their businesses. Also, I'm doing this because a lot of people ask me, Jeff, I'm going to market my business on your show, mm-hmm. on your platform. How do I do that? Well, here's your opportunity. Mm-hmm. Because now we have businesses that's going to be pre- featured during the premiere on the big screen. So where is it going to be at? Silver Spot. Oh, okay. Yep, in Pinecrest, out in okay. Orange Village. 
Yeah, right. we're gonna do it right, man. We're gonna okay. do it. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it the right way. So this is a film. Yeah, it's a show that's being featured on the big screen. Okay. And just, you going to do a little narration before that kind of thing. You know what, man? We're going to do it. It's, it's going to be, I got the whole thing set up. It, it, I got it set up, man. It's okay. going okay. to be nice, man. Yeah. We got giving the, away some goodies and stuff. You come yeah. Oh, yeah. We're yeah. giving away. I've uh, got some great sponsorships. Mm -hmm. Big shout out to our sponsors, Drip mm -hmm. Alkaline, mm -hmm. Suavecito Tequila, Power Brand, mm -hmm. Sharita, Carthon, and mm -hmm. Howard Clay Films. I mean, mm -hmm. we've got some good stuff, man, that's okay. happening. Awesome. Ruthie's List mm -hmm. and several other sp sponsors that we have, man. We've got some good stuff stuff man and i'm excited Big i tell time. you man i'm excited for you man you've been doing some good things around the community and you never know who's watching you as i've been watching you from afar and i said you know I what i'm gonna that. get that guy on my show one day and when i saw you there i said there he is i'm gonna walk <laughs> up right to him down and try to get him on my yeah, show yeah. to come you in was at the gala we I was at the gala, gala. Yeah, yeah, exactly. right, right. so i, I right. wanted to try to get you on there and like i said i watch your show watch coco and been thinking that's some good stuff you guys are doing and i'm wanting us to do more linking in together but before you go Okay. I want to ask you a couple of questions. Talk to me. I can't see what the heck did I... Oh, here it is. These are my final questions that I ask all my guests before they leave my okay. show. And I'm going to ask you one second here. Let me pull it up. Here we go. So the first question that I have for you is, Jeff, if you could trade places with anybody for one day, who would it be? That's a good question. 24 hours, 6 o'clock in the morning, the next day you're back to Jeff. Mm, that's a good question. I would probably say, I probably wouldn't trade places with nobody. Let me tell you why. Mm. Because my life is my life. Mm -hmm. What I've been through is what I've been through. And the rewards that come from my faithfulness in that journey is for me. Now, if there's somebody that I would like to sit down and talk with, absolutely. But there's someone I would like to get some wisdom from, absolutely. But to trade places with somebody, no, because that person may have had cancer. Somebody may have went through something in their life that I may not want to be a part of. Mm -hmm. Like somebody may not want to be a part of what I've been through. but. I, I would love to sit down with some folks, get in the room. One of the people I would like to sit down with would be President Barack Obama because I appreciate him representing us mm -hmm. while he was in the White House the way he did. Another person I would like to sit down with would be uh, Jay-Z, his business mindset mm -hmm. and how he does things. Just another person I would like to sit down from a, from another musical standpoint would be Patti LaBelle. You know, just, <laughs> just just listening to her talk because she has that down home mm -hmm. type vibe and and she might bust out singing and she's one of my favorite singers of all time so I would just like to mm -hmm. listen to her sing and just relax talk. and eat with Patty oh yeah man oh, yeah. maybe one of her sweet potatoes I'm saying you have a good time with her yeah so yeah for me that would probably be from that standpoint that's interesting y'all gonna make me change my question because getting more and more people say they wouldn't change their life for nobody. That's pretty interesting. So yeah. that's, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, no, because our life is fit for us. Mm -hmm. You know, just like your life fit for yeah. you. Yeah, I get some who, I had some crazy ones. I didn't have people say, who wanted to be Jay-Z, say, I just want to be Jay-Z. Yeah, you know, I don't want kind of to. I know. think people, when we say we want to be somebody, we don't understand when we say that. I, I want to be like Jesus. That's mm -hmm. what people say, I want to be like Jesus. Mm -hmm. But you couldn't carry the burden that Jesus carried. That's why you're not like him. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What's your guilty pleasure? Oh, my goodness. Oh, I got plenty of those. <laughs> <laughs> what's the one I tell everybody? I tell you the one, what's the one you want to uh, share with Oh, you? okay, yeah, that's the one. Oh, uh, you know what, man? My guilty pleasure. Since I've made this lifestyle change, man, mm -hmm. I, I, my guilty pleasure is, was, or I should say was, like, eating late at night like sweets and mm. graham crackers and graham crackers and ain't a sweet no no listen <laughs> for me it is if you just eat the whole box <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying you just eating at night popcorn and, and candy yeah. and like Oreo cookies be, yeah. and all that kind of, so that's when I had to and no I was telling you earlier mm. that I'm now I'm a full-blown pescatarian mm -hmm. so i've changed all of that i'm down 15 pounds so i had to cut all, a lot of stuff out of my diet and my lifestyle because of 
lot of things that are happening in my life that are good. Mm -hmm. So I want to be able to not just obtain it, but maintain it. And the way you do that is through your health. Yeah. So for me, just late night snacking and mm -hmm. sweets and pop. Yeah. And I don't drink, but here's the crazy part. I don't drink a lot of pop, though. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't. Mm -hmm. you know, unless it's like ginger ale. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I might go buy a sun kiss or a Tahitian treat. Right. And I'd be like, right. oh, my God. Right. But I haven't had it in five weeks, so now right. I don't have no desire for it. Exactly. But, yeah, that's one of my little guilty pleasures that, that I'm going to disclose right now. Hey, exactly. <laughs> hey, that's what I tell you. I want you to disclose with her. What's the best compliment you ever got? Wow. Some of the brothers that were locked up with me, I see them off from time to time when we're in passing. And, and a lot of them always let me know how much I influenced their life in a positive way mm. when they were broken, when they were in a space that they were struggling to recover because of their lifestyle and the things that they were going through. So that's a compliment to me that even to this day, even though I've been away from prison 10 years, that no longer than that, yeah, 2013, yeah, yeah, 10 years, that someone can say to me and say hey you hurt you helped me your, mm -hmm. your life was inspirational to me and they see me now and they're like man they like brown that's how you address mm -hmm. that's how we address each other hey brown i'm glad to see you doing what we knew you was able to do that mm -hmm. you was that you was doing in prison now you're doing it out here on a bigger level mm -hmm. so to me that that means a lot to me excellent excellent something you wish you were better at good question man it's a lot of things I tend, and, it's, and I guess I got twofold <laughs> with this. So I've become a better listener. All right. Okay. Throughout, mm -hmm. un, as an interviewer, you got to mm -hmm. listen, right? Mm -hmm. as, but sometimes in your personal relationships, we listen to respond. That's correct. And instead of just uh, I'm, I'm listening, of that yeah, all the time. We, instead of just listening to listen, mm -hmm. to hear. Mm -hmm. and to correct what was what could possibly be wrong mm -hmm. and so for me i've learned not to listen to respond uh, for me that's been something that i've worked on very hard i think that's a me, hard one too it's very hard because we stand in our own truth and you respect what the individual is saying mm -hmm. but at the same time you want that individual to understand where you're coming from that's correct so it's not that you don't respect mm -hmm. what they're saying <laughs> it's just that you want them to understand that hey i'm coming from a place that's genuine and i don't mean wrong to you i don't want this to be this i don't want this tension or i don't want mm -hmm. it to be this way mm -hmm. but i need you to understand why right my response is like this or mm -hmm. why am I, what's the cause and what's the effect mm -hmm. of where we are. So for me, that's, for me, that's what it is. I think the other part for me is I'm guilty of wanting better for people than they want for themselves. I'm guilty of that. And sometimes we carry mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And we all the time. Yes. Yeah. We yeah. carry that. You're taking people, their drama with you, their hurt, their pain, and you should mm -hmm. to an extent mm -hmm. because you want to have empathy, you want to be compassionate, you want to have compassion, and you want to support. But sometimes, man, that thing, that damn thing becomes a little bit overbearing. Mm -hmm. It becomes mm -hmm. overwhelming when you're dealing with what you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. And I tend to pour out more. Mm -hmm. In some cases, I don't get back. And I guess that's some of the, I guess, some of the caveats that come with being a leader mm -hmm. or being, as some people say, you an influencer, influencer Jeff, right. or whatever right. you want right. to right. call it. But, you know, at the end of the day, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. It's the life mm -hmm. that was designed for me. Mm -hmm. It's my call, my purpose. And you take the good and you take the bad. What's the worst piece of advice you ever got someone ever gave you? <laughs> oh, man, let me see here. I haven't got a lot of worse. You I got, got, lot I got a lot of that, man. This is oh why my you can just think about real quick. You'd be like, you know what? This motherfucker told me one yeah, day. Yeah. No, I shouldn't have did that. <laughs> friend of mine, friend of mine told me to do something. Female friend, I, female I was dealing with a long time ago. Okay. And I didn't want to help her. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because she needed some help. Mm -hmm. I just didn't want to. I was burnt out. I didn't want to deal with her no All more. Right. But my buddy say, man, you shouldn't be that way because you got it and she need the help. Mm -hmm. I'm like, she, she, she ain't got no kids or nothing like, but mm -hmm. what that got to do with anything, Jeff? Don't mm -hmm. be like that. You got it. Mm -hmm. And you never know what that would be. Mm -hmm. And so I wind up helping the young lady, whatever. Make a long story short, she tells me 
that she got to do after I gave her the money. <laughs> but she didn't want to ask him. Well, why whoa, the hell not? Whoa, that is some bad advice. Man, my man, I know some other stuff, but yeah. I'm sure. But there's some really I'm bad like, advice I'm about like, that one. Listen, I'm like, damn, I don't want to. I'm like, damn, I didn't want to help. I mean, yeah, I didn't want to help her in the first place. <laughs> and now, yeah, you, it's almost like. Oh, that's terrible. This is a long time ago. Yeah, that's terrible. Yeah, yeah. I, I can imagine you was pissed off about Oh, that. man, yeah, because yeah. I could have did something else with that 300. <laughs> Last one for you, my friend. What never seems to make you smile? You think about this all the time. When you're down, whenever it is, you can flash back in your mind and be like, man, that was a crazy time or whatever. What makes you that makes you smile at the end? They always get you. What makes say that one more time? What never seems that what never ceases to not make you smile when you think about it. What makes you smile all the time? What makes me smile all the time? Mm-hmm. Life. What For part me, of life is the it a fact, certain thing? Like I give the you fact, the fact that I'm alive when I okay. think about it. When you just think about it. Yeah, man. Because it's a lot of people leaving out of here, man. I don't know if you've been paying no, attention. No, it is, it's it a is, lot of people is, leaving out of is, here. And you know me, man. I'm in a space right now. I'll be honest with you. I don't, I'm not holding no grudges with people. If mm-hmm. people got issues with me, I don't care. Mm-hmm. And, and not, not to say it begrudgingly, I'm saying that I'm available. If you want to talk, fine. If not, I don't give a damn. Mm-hmm. Because I got one life to live. I cannot let the weight of others, the weight of the world, when I'm fighting mm-hmm. my own battles, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm struggling every day or I'm dealing with this every day. I'm going through this. I can't do it, man. I'm grateful and I'm smiling because I'm alive. That's I'm alive, awesome. man. Awesome. And when I look at That's my awesome. life and everything I've been through, man, mm-hmm. I'm alive mm-hmm. and I'm alive to tell it. I can mm-hmm. sit down with a Ken doll mm-hmm. and say, hey, man, this is my story. Mm-hmm. This is what it's about. This is Jeff Brown. I can be transparent mm-hmm. and say, hey, man, mm-hmm. this is it. Right. I'm, this is right. what makes me smile, that any opportunity that I got to really be my to talk about who I am and what I've been through and in hopes that that it can help somebody else then that's something to smile about Mm. if I'm able to use my influence to help a friend or help a family member if I'm can you call me say Jeff you know what can you help me with this what you think Mm -hmm. about this Mm -hmm. and my impact or my influence or whatever Mm -hmm. my resource is that I'm connected to helps you Mm -hmm. I'm smiling Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Because I did my job, I I helped make you better. And guess what? You gonna make me better. Cause mm-hmm. guess what's gonna happen? I'm gonna call you and say, hey, Ken, what you think about this? Mm-hmm. What's your thoughts? Can you help me with this? And mm-hmm. guess what? You are gonna say either yes or no. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's another part of why I smile. Mm-hmm. I got the ability to say yes or mm-hmm. hell no, <laughs> and not and not be stressed about it, and not worry about a person response, and not worry about mm-hmm. none of that stupid stuff, man. Mm-hmm. I'm just being honest, like. Mm-hmm. I'm happy, man, that Mm -hmm. I'm alive, man. That's great. Because a lot of people not. My cousin just lost his mother. Mm -hmm. My cousin's husband, my cousin Mm -hmm. just lost his mother. There was an explosion on a building, 139th. And uh, and, uh, his mom died. Oh, a couple of days ago. Yeah. Yeah. That's my my cousin's mother. I saw that on the news. She didn't make it out. I saw that on the news. Yeah. I have no reason to be pissed off. Mm -hmm. Let me be honest with you. I have moments, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I don't allow the moment to become lifetime. I right. don't allow that moment right. to become something that's that that's a takeover. Mm. We're listen, we are human. Right. We have the ability and the right to feel away. Mm. It's nothing wrong with being not okay with where you are in your life. It's okay mm-hmm. not to be okay. Mm-hmm. And for a long time I in my mind and I thought, man, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. But in essence, Jeff, you not. Right. But when I decided to say it's not okay, I started smiling because I said to hell with it. <laughs> like, man, man get yeah, that yeah, shit out of here, man. Right. Let's get out. No, I ain't got time yeah, for it, man, because right. guess what? I got bigger fish to fry. Mm-hmm. I got bigger things in front of me. I can't let my life be stuck here. And that's, And for me... I hope a lot of people think like that, but not to say that we are desensitized, mm-hmm. that we're not compassionate, we don't care. But man, everybody is putting out fires, everybody is building, everybody got stuck. It, mm-hmm. is, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. And why am I going to allow life circumstances 
to steal my joy. Right. Because that's the reality of it. That's why I smile because I still have joy. Mm-hmm. I have joy in my heart. I have the joy that that the world didn't give me, mm-hmm. and they can't take it away. My joy is the assurance that God is yet faithful to me. That that when I call His name, He gonna answer. When I talk to Him, I know He's listening. And even if He don't respond, I still know He's there, mm-hmm. and I know that He's working it out for me. And that's where I'm at with it, man. That's why I live. That's why I smile, because I know I'm alive. And I know that my life is blessed because of him. Mm-hmm. God is good to me, man. He's mm-hmm. brought me through a lot. Mm-hmm. He's brought me through a lot. Have I been perfect? Absolutely not. Oh, God, no. Mm-hmm. Even, in, even in this space, in this season that I'm in, I've made some decisions. I've made, hey, but as a man, we face them. We make it right. We do what we do. Nobody's perfect. We just do what we're supposed to do to correct it mm-hmm. so we can continue on with our life and continue to make progress so we can t- continue to make impact in the world around us, man. So, yeah, that's why I smile, because I'm alive. That's Jeff Brown, people. That's why he made it on this program. Interesting guy. He's a lot more spiritual than I thought he was. So that's why you say when you meet people, you get to know a little bit more about him. So he's a very spiritual guy as well. So, Jeff, like we do, we like to end our program with giving you an opportunity to look at that camera right there. That camera belongs to you, Jeff. Take your time. Our connections affect our directions in life. Why is that so important? Because you have to be aware of who you are plugged into. It's almost like an electrical socket. When you have to plug the lamp into the socket, what happens? You are expecting that socket gives electricity or power to allow the lamp to shine when you turn it on, right? But what happens when the plug or the electrical socket don't work? Then there's a bad connection such as life, who are you connected to? What connections have caused you not to be able to achieve your goals and your dreams? What connections have caused you hurt? What connections have betrayed you? What connections have caused you not to be able to love again? What are those connections? Who are you connected to? And then again, reevaluate and appreciate some of the connections that you are connected to where they have helped you expand your business allowed you to meet new people, allowed you to, my God, I don't know, find love again, or whatever the case might be, but only you can understand what that connection is. So understand, our connections affect our direction in life. Where is your GPS right now? I always look at GPS. I know it's the global positioning system, but I always look at it as God's positioning system. And a lot of times God connects us where he wants us to be because it is in that positioning system where our destiny, our destiny ultimately lies. With that said, God loves you, and I love you, and there's nothing in the world you can do about it. Your Remember your connection. And thank you. My podcast and radio show, we're syndicated actually in Sacramento on Rhythm 105.9 FM and in Eggert, Nebraska on 90.5 Hits. But the podcast, again, is the Jeff Brown Show with Coco Brown and you can follow us on all major podcasting platforms iHeart, Spotify, Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your podcast go subscribe right now show me some love and tune in Hey, everybody, I will have all links in the descriptions on how you can reach out to Jeff. Keep up with what he's doing, and definitely the Coast for Kids is a big event. We want to make sure we participate in that. And don't forget, secrets. We're going to go check that out because if you don't want to be that person to say afterwards that, damn, this guy was from Cleveland. We was doing it here. He's going to get it started here, and you get a chance to premiere and be there. So make sure come, come out. Come on and confess. And if you got something you want to confess to, <laughs> Reach out to that man. He don't don't let you do it. (laughs) And we got help for you. (laughs) We'll see y'all next week. Peace. Peace. Good job, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you all for tuning in.